need computer training for a group or office, contact us today to get a free demo of our training at www.teachucomp.com forward slash enterprise dash licensing. In Access, you are manipulating a contained collection of smaller objects within the database file. Although the terms database and table are often used interchangeably, in Access you should refer to the entire collection of tables, queries, forms, reports, macros, and modules as the database, and only refer to tables as tables for clarity's sake. Access is also what is referred to as a relational database program. In a relational database, you store large amounts of data into the smallest possible increments within the tables. You then relate these tables together by joining common fields between them. In this way, you store less redundant data and your database will operate more quickly and efficiently. When you relate tables, you are then able to access any data within the related tables. A database file is designed to store information and retrieve it at a later point in time. The many types of objects within a database file work together to allow you to do this. However, in order to create an effective and useful database file, you must learn how to design and create many different types of objects. This is one of the primary reasons that learning database design is more difficult than learning many other types of applications. Now you will examine the various types of objects in a basic database file and what their purpose is within the overall scheme of database design. The first and most fundamental object type within a database is a table. A table is a collection of data about a certain subject, like customers, vendors, or suppliers. It consists of columns and rows into which you store data. The columns all contain only one type of data and are called fields. For example, within a customer table, you may have a first name field into which you place only your customers' first names. The rows in a table all contain one set of related field information for a single entry and are called records. So for example, in your customer table, you may have a customer record that contains all of the field information about that particular customer contained within one row. Tables are the building blocks of almost all other types of database objects. Tables contain all of the information that is to be stored, manipulated, and retrieved. Therefore, almost everything in a database is fundamentally dependent on the tables and their structure. So while tables are often the database objects with which new users are most familiar, it is important not to approach table design haphazardly. Errors made during the creation and design of the tables will often cause problems in the functionality of their related objects, forcing you to go back and redesign or edit the tables as well as the other related objects if you proceed with your database design too quickly. Creating well-designed data tables and joining them appropriately is one of the most difficult aspects of database design. It is certainly the aspect which many new users have the most difficulty understanding. It's also one of the most important aspects of database design. The next type of database object to discuss is the query. The purpose of a query is to extract only the data records that you want or need to view from the tables. These objects are the heart of database design and the whole point of using databases. The queries provide the data that is needed by the other database objects, often working in the background. So mastering queries will also be an important part of creating a functional database. Now, queries are mainly used to extract data for reporting, but you will also learn how they can be used to modify data as well. The next type of database object to review is the form. Forms are often used as user interfaces for the associated underlying tables.
They are also used to control the flow of the database program for users. A form typically allows users of the database to edit data or click other buttons that may launch reports and perform other user-related tasks within the database. Forms are the face of your database, as they are often all that the user will see and interact with when using a finished database application. Within web-based applications in Access 2013, the view is also used to serve the purpose of forms within the app. The next type of database object to discuss is the report. Reports are a commonly used way of showing data extracted from the tables by the queries in a more printer-friendly format than the query itself can provide. Reports can also perform secondary calculations and analysis on the query data, making them very powerful data analysis tools. The next type of database object to examine is the macro. Macros are small bits of visually created programming that help automate processes within a database. For example, if you wanted a user to click a button in a form to launch a report, you could create a macro that automatically runs a report. You could then attach the macro to the button's on click event so that when a user clicks the button within the form, it runs the macro, thus running the report. The final type of database object to discuss is the module. Modules are similar in purpose to macros, however they are created in a non-visual environment. When creating modules, you actually have to type code into a separate Microsoft Visual Basic application window. It uses a sister language of the Visual Basic language called Visual Basic for Applications, or VBA, to create programs that can be much more complex in nature than the ones created by macros. However, many improvements have been added to the functionality of the macros in Access, so that the usage of modules will rarely be needed by the typical Access database designer. Many database designers will not make much use of modules, but they can be valuable for the professional database designer. A database should be simple, logical, and straightforward in its design. In general, you use forms to enter information into tables. The data is then stored in these tables, which are related to each other as necessary. You can use queries to pull specific information from the tables in your database. The queries often form the basis for reports, which will then allow you to view the information you requested. Once this system is in place, you can automate it by using macros and modules to simplify and streamline the processes involved in entering, storing, and retrieving data. This is the main reason that you use databases, to enter, store, and retrieve data. Like what you see? Get a free demo of our training for groups of five or more at www.teachucomp.com forward slash enterprise dash licensing.